Welcome to Surf Blaster. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most common questions that we get at the Surf Blaster help desk. That question is, what are the differences between CompTIA A plus 220-1102 objectives and the A plus 220-1202? This question is a very important one to ask as you prepare yourself for certification. With each official exam release, CompTIA releases their objective list for each certification exam they offer. This list of both main objectives and sub-objectives allows students to understand what topics are being discussed on that particular exam. These objectives are the outlines of the knowledge and skills that are covered in the certification exam. They serve as the very structure for the entire certification exam. The main objectives are the overall topics or domains that make up the specific exam. These cover the key areas of expertise that are expected for a professional to have in the field. The sub-objectives are the specific detailed topics or areas of knowledge that fall under each main objective. They list the specific tools, tech, skills, and concepts that you will need to be familiar with to pass the certification exam. At Cert Blaster, we author each question to fit with each main and sub-objective that you will find on the official exams. Here are a few examples of how we translate a sub-objective into a practice question on Cert Blaster. First, we are going to look at a multiple choice question from Drill 2 of our A plus 220-1102 practice exams. As you can see at the top, we reference both the main objective, security, and underneath we see the sub-objective, 2.6. Given a scenario, configure a workstation to meet best practices for security. In the question text, we are given a scenario where we come to work four hours early in order to satisfy mission-critical timelines. However, we are unable to get on the network to access our files. If you look at sub-objective 2.6 in our A plus 220-1102 objectives list, we can see under the subheader Account Management that restrict login times are one of the topics that are discussed under this objective. This is a realistic example of security settings that you will set for your potential clients in order to prevent unauthorized access to the network. For our next example, we're going to take a look at a question that was created for Domain 3.0 Software Troubleshooting, Sub-objective 3.4, given a scenario, troubleshoot common mobile OS and application issues. We are told that our car, our phone, and our tablet are all Bluetooth enabled. We typically leave the tablet near the garage. We keep our phone with us and on. When we start our bug car, we find that it connects to the tablet almost immediately. We would like our phone to be connected as well, but that isn't happening. We are asked what the fastest solution would be to resolve the issue. Even though we may already know the answer, we're going to go ahead and click the answer button. Here, you'll see that the solution to our problem is to check the pairing status with the vehicle. In the explanation text, we are then told that the phone will need to be paired with our car before a connection is possible. The explanation also informs us how many connections Bluetooth can support and other connection requirements that a device may need. This explanation helps us to know the basics of how Bluetooth connections work, the limitations that Bluetooth connections currently possess, as well as another reason as to why we're experiencing this issue. Quickly looking at our objectives list again, we see that under the referenced sub-objective that one of the topics that are discussed are connectivity issues with Bluetooth. This question is another wonderful, impossible, real-world example that perfectly fits with the exact topic for this section of the certification exam. For our last example, we're going to look at an interactive question for Domain 4.0 Operational Procedures, sub-objective 4.3, given a scenario, Implement Workstation Backup and Recovery Methods. We are told in this instruction text that after setting up a new laptop, we want to use an external USB drive for a local backup to save our work hourly. We are then instructed on how to perform this task. Looking at our objectives list, we clearly see under backup and recovery that incremental backups are one of the topics that are discussed in the exam. As technology continues to progress, the CompTIA certification exams want to make sure that you are prepared to take them on. That is why with every release, there are some changes to help keep up with the ever-changing world of technology. Some releases have way more drastic changes than others, so that is why this information is extremely important. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Here is the list of all the objective changes between the A plus 220-1102 objectives and the newly released A plus 220-1202. At the top of all of the CompTIA official objective lists, they will always reveal how the certification exam is weighted by each domain. This helps you to know which areas contain the bulk of the information that you will be tested on in the exam. However, please bear in mind that no two certification exam experiences will ever be the same with CompTIA's extensive question count. So be sure to study each domain so that you are prepared for the exam. For this exam, the main changes are to the first two domains. Domain 1.0 operating systems took a 3% hit, going from 31% down to 28%. 
Domain 2.0 security, on the other hand, got an increase of 3%, going from 25% of the exam to 28. Domain 3.0 software troubleshooting got a 1% increase from 22 to 23%. Domain 4.0 operational procedures went from 22% down to 21%. The increase for security in particular is in no way surprising. With the use of AI, scammers have gotten even better at creating realistic looking emails, having real sounding voices for phone scams, and even impersonating local law enforcement, the IRS, or even tech support from reliable companies such as Microsoft. Safeguarding your employers, clients, and even your own personal information is extremely important. Now, where things may get interesting are actually the changes to the subjectives themselves. Sometimes nothing changes, sometimes more topics are added, moved to a new domain or subobjective, or removed entirely. Domain 1.0 has gone through a lot of changes. Since this domain focuses on operating systems, and with Windows 10 no longer receiving support from Microsoft starting in October 2025, it is no wonder. One of the most notable changes is in the former 1102 1.1 subobjective that is now subobjective 1.3 and 1202. Not only has content been added for Windows 11, but we also see the end versions of the operating systems are also discussed. There's also more content added for hardware requirements, Trusted Platform Module, TPM, and the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI. We also had two sub-objectives merged together. The 1102 sub-objectives 1 1.4 and 1.5 are combined together to create 1202 sub-objective 1 1.6. The sub-objectives focus on control panel utility in Windows settings. This was done because Windows is transitioning from using Control Panel to their Settings app, which was not fully migrated in Windows 10. While Windows 11 will still have the control panel, it will mainly be used for backwards compatibility and for certain advanced settings in order to put more emphasis on the settings app. Lastly, the last big change to this domain is that we actually are given a completely new subobjective, 1202.1.11, given a scenario, install and configure cloud-based productivity tools. With the use of cloud-based storage being common for mobile devices, gaming, and other business solutions, it is no wonder that this needed to be an important topic to touch upon for the exams. Domain 2.0 didn't really change much. The main change is that this domain received a new subobjective that was originally in 1102 subobjective 3.3. 1202 subobjective 2.6, given a scenario, implement procedures for basic small office slash home office SOHO malware removal. Domain 3.0 mainly received some cosmetic changes and lost the sub-objectives that we discussed during the Domain 2.0 changes. Lastly, we're going to discuss Domain 4.0. For the most part, the domain had stayed the same. Even the cosmetic changes were minimal with only one domain getting a name change. However, this domain has gained one of the most important topics of discussion as a sub-objective. Sub-objective 1202.4.10 explain basic concepts related to artificial intelligence, AI. While AI is not a new concept, it has been in development for roughly 70 years, it is only within the last 20 years that AI has really boomed, with AI being able to now create and manipulate content. The use of AI has been heavily debated on the internet. From copyright infringements, the methods that are implemented to train the AI to complete tasks, the social and economic impacts, even down to the amount of security risks. Though, there is no denying that AI, whether positive or negative, is only going to keep developing and changing our very way of life. This will be a topic that anyone in the IT field should pay very close attention to for the years to come. Thank you very much for your interest in our CERT Blaster for A plus 220-1202 exam simulator. Look for its upcoming release on the website soon. We wish you a smooth test prep and the best of luck on exam day.